other local uh, elected officials in the area. Um, some are here tonight. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to introduce a couple of people. John Ritchie, one of our former um, mayors of Danville. <laughs> A really close friend of ours that many of us have known for many years who served so well and so long on our school board, San Ramon's newest mayor, Bill Clarkson. Oh, yeah. And right in front of him is one of his former um, associates, uh, Greg Marble, on our school board. All right. Everybody here is special, so I'm not going to introduce you. We try to go around, but every one of you has a title, a part, a way that you're connected to our community. And what's really special to have you here is one, we hope you are supporting Candace. Most, most important that you do, but please tell your friends. You know, this is a nonpartisan race, it's, 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 it's about local government. Everything you touch and feel is created by local government. We have the opportunity to have Candace represent us in the new district, which includes um, Lafayette, Miranda, Moraga, Miranda, Moraga, Lafayette, La Miranda, Rossmore, Alamo, Daniel, and San Ramon. And the bulk of that representation is here in this valley. What we want is somebody to represent us, our values. We are, as, as, as District 2, we're the largest single contributor to the tax base. We pay the most amount of taxes. We need to make sure we get our fair share. We also want to make sure that the development and all the things that are important to us for our quality of life are held to the highest standard. Candace is, is somebody, and I have to tell you, Mike Doyle and I share something really good in common. We appointed him. We appointed her. <laughs> Place Millie Greenberg would probably be the most. Did I ever say thank you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the most extraordinary person, and we are so honored to be here tonight to support Candace Anderson, who will be, with your help and your support, your vote, and your money. This is not a local election in the sense that we all just pass the hat. This costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. It is the way it is, just to be able to communicate your message. So we do need your help. We know times are changing, um, but this is somebody who will help keep our economy going. The county needs to have some control, some balance. Candace is going to do that for us. So again, all I can say is I can't wait till June because there will be one election and Candace will be our supervisor. <laughs> Thank you to these great men up here and Karen who have hosted this wonderful event tonight. Thank to all of you for being here this evening as well. I appreciate so many of you who I already know, who I consider dear friends. Those of you who I don't know as well, but you will be my dear friends. So I thank you as well. We're at a critical time in the county. And it's a time when experience really is going to count moving forward. We need to reestablish our priorities. Number one priority to me is law enforcement. Right now we have an issue where we have underfunded sheriff's department, underfunded DA's office, and we're not able to prosecute all of our misdemeanors. We're not able to even investigate all of our misdemeanors. The majority of people in our community want a safe community. And for Danville, we have had law enforcement always our number one budget priority. And on the county level, it should be also, because it's very, very important that we adequately fund those areas. Number two is simply the economy, the budget. We've all read about the pension issues. We, we have to make sure that we don't have any spiking of pension, any pension abuse, but more importantly, that we realistically look at what is happening to our pensions. How are we going to have these adequately funded? How are we going to ensure that our workers do get the pensions they do deserve, but that they don't abuse the process in any way, and that we as taxpayers can afford those pensions? We need to use realistic numbers. We need to make sure that we are able to afford what we are telling people we are going to promise them when they retire. And it just comes down to being taking a realistic approach about that. It's about quality of life in our community. In Danville and San Ramon, we've inherited 
the beautiful now Doherty Valley that was not done on our terms, but done on the county's terms, with San Ramon needing to annex it in after the county approved the project. In Danville, East Danville, we had large-scale development brought forward, and Danville has had to take the burden of providing those services to those individuals. As supervisor, I am going to ensure that if any time we move our urban growth boundary beyond what the voters have already approved, Danville and San Ramon have a seat at the table in deciding what happens on their community's footsteps. We have to. Yeah. It's also about turning around the economy, making it easier to do business in Contra Costa County. I look at what we've been able to do in Danville with our business concierge program, with the grants we've offered to businesses that have helped our businesses survive this last four years recession we've been in. And we can do the same on a county level. We can help other cities do the same. We need to help the building industry turn around as well. We need to ensure that we streamline processes so that building can go on because of the trickle down effect on the economy. Overall, we need to help our communities, and we have such a very homogeneous community, make sure, as Newell mentioned, that we get our return to source funds. We are deal dealing with a very difficult dance with regional agencies right now where they want to tell the city how to plan, how to spend their money, and it's very important that we have someone on the county level who's able to stand up to that and say, no, those are our tax dollars. They need to be spent where we deem most appropriate for our community. I thank you for your support. I shouldn't say older, I'm the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> Retired President Jim Bicker for the Deputy Sheriff's Association, current President Ken Westerman of the Deputy Sheriff's Association. Oh, we yeah. have lots of <laughs> um, just put this out there, but this is a partnership with the Sheriff's Department and the Board of Supervisors. Our Sheriff's Department is the lowest paid in the county, and they're expected to do a lot. And I want to get Matt kind of think of this event. But they're here to show support and try to figure this out so we can all together benefit from the uh, solutions in the future. So I uh, thank them for coming. Yeah. All right. Thank you all for coming. I really mean that, uh, showing support for Candace. It is with mixed emotions that I stand here this evening because I know she's going to be elected as supervisor, but the town going to lose a great council person. Oh. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I really love her. And I will hate to see her go, but I know that she will do a magnificent job there. She is one of the most prepared persons I've ever had to serve with on the council or any commission. She is the most prepared person that I've ever seen. She could recite our, uh, what do you call it? The general plan. <laughs> <laughs> so when I have a problem with her, I just call Candace. But if she's going to be re-elected, and with your support, that's going to happen. Thank you. And thank you. For so those of you that I said, just come and eat and drink and don't worry about donating, yeah, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get out the door. You, know, no, no, no. you can't get out the door. <laughs> you know, whatever you can do. Whatever you can do, and we all know it's a tough economy. Whatever you can do to help, it's always appreciated. You know, if it's twenty-five dollars, uh, it's, it's twenty-five dollars that goes in the right direction. And we are so appreciative that you're even here tonight, taking a Saturday night uh, out of everybody's busy schedule. Everyone has such busy life. We are so thankful that you took the time to be here tonight with us. And if you can tell your friends and tell your neighbors how important it is to get out and vote, you know, I think Candace will see you know the results in June. And then we won't have to have a runoff in November. And as Mike mentioned, you know, once she leaves the council, uh, we lose a very important voice on the council. And naturally, you know, we're we're we're, we're okay with that. It's bittersweet, but uh, we all want to be here to support Candace Anderson. So thank you once again. The bar is open. We have food. There's cigars afterwards. If anybody would like cigars? Oh. <laughs>
Phil Anderson. I'll take that as a yes. And Phil Anderson. Candace's husband. Charlotte Wood and his good friend Weston Neron who came along for the fun. All right. <laughs>